let's talk about the Richard Allen case out of Delphi. We know he's been arrested on two counts of murder for little Abby and Libby who were found on Valentine's Day back in 2017. Now the judge in this case who has been trying to keep a lot under wraps, he is going off on a YouTuber. I'm not going to name that YouTuber, but you can almost see both sides of the debate. So let's talk about this new court order. Everyone on Reddit is going off about it. It is the state of Indiana County of Carroll versus Richard M. Allen. So there's a court order. It was entered today, Thursday, November 3rd. And the video I found regarding this judge, whose name is kind of spelled like Wiener with a D, so I'm just going to call him Diener. So I'll just call him Diener, but I've, I've heard it pronounced different ways. This guy is really already under pressure, and this judge, from how he's responding to the press, the press is fighting to get more information out of Richard Allen's case, while others are trying to keep it under wraps. So let's take a look at this court order. It was on November 2nd, 2022, when I won't even, <laughs> I think it's Sheriff Lesenby. Sheriff Lesenby of Carroll County filed a request by the Sheriff of Carroll County to transfer inmate from Carroll County Jail to the custody of the Indiana DOC for safekeeping. We know initially Richard Allen was taken to Carroll County Jail in Indiana, but they immediately moved him over and they're going to talk about bulletproof vest he was wearing and everything. This county already feels overwhelmed by the international attention this case has drawn. And if this judge presides over the entire case. Boy, we're in for quite a trial. We have just learned within this last hour that the judge in the Delphi murders has now taken action and recused himself from presiding over that case. Well, Allen County Judge Fran Gull will now take over as the special judge in the Delphi murder case against Richard Allen. The court being duly advised finds that the defendant is an inmate awaiting trial and is in imminent danger of serious bodily injury or death and represents a substantial threat to the safety of others. This finding is not predicated on any acts or alleged acts of the defendant since arrest, rather a toxic and harmful insistence on public information about defendant and this case. So he's calling like the press or anyone who wants to go through the legal means, I guess, of getting information about the case toxic and harmful. In general, this court has 30 days to rule on any motion that is filed by a party in any case. And I'm glad that the press is pressing for information about this case, of course, the right way, not the wrong way. It's because of the press, we'll see them pressuring the press pressuring for the probable cause affidavit to be released, that at least we have a hearing on it on November 22nd. Chances are this judge will say, nope, you're not gonna read anything about why we arrested Richard Allen. And if it's for a good reason, if it would tip off anyone else who needs to be arrested, if it would throw the coming case into a tizzy, I understand. But Delphi is one of those cases I've watched over the years and they've been really shy about giving us certain information. For example, the video of the bridge guy, down the hill guys, we've seen it a billion times, about two seconds long. Well, the original video is 43 seconds. We've never seen it. I believe it should have been released only if it didn't contain upsetting or graphic information that the public didn't need to hear. Back to this court order. Yet, concurrent to the actual case naturally occurring, this judicial officer, this is the judge, the judge wrote, and people can't believe a judge wrote this, this judicial officer keeps getting direct requests from non-parties for public information, claiming that this officer has seven days, or one week, I believe he meant, when hand-delivered to respond to the request or face litigation, exclamation point. Yeah. I get it. Um, when we fill out our freedom of information requests, you can say, yes, provide information within the law in a certain period of time or face litigation. No, I mean, the person he's talking about most likely is really litigious or he was in his past. So I understand that I'm not for frivolous lawsuits, but I am the type of person that if information exists in the legal setting and we, and we can get it in a legal manner, the public is 
do that information. Just like in the Nicole Kessinger case, Chris Watts's mistress, you know, they had one of her interview videos, the visuals, sitting somewhere for years until I wrote a threatened to sue letter and then lickety split. Thank God they released it. I didn't want to threaten to sue anyone. No reporters probably want to. It's just when cops play hide and seek with information, that gets frustrating. While this officer is responsible for the entirety of the circuit court docket, it attempts to ignore the maelstrom of interest from the public. It is known that YouTube already hosts content regarding family members of this judicial officer, including photos. This judge created this order like that. He must have just watched the video yesterday. It was published yesterday. I'm not going to name it. I'm not going to link to it. I don't believe in necessarily publishing the photos of family members. For example, Richard Allen, we know he is married. His wife's name is Kathy Allen, and that's as far as I've gone. I've like blurred out her photos or blocked her photos, and I've read a lot of comments, especially on TikTok, where people are like, why are you blocking her face? Show her face. I don't want the mob mentality to get to people. Some people are nuts. So I don't believe in necessarily, I mean, it's perfectly legal, public photos. I could publish them. I mean, Inside Edition surely published Richard Allen's photo of his daughter on the bridge, the infamous high bridge in Delphi, where the, you know, down the hill bridge guy was walking Inside Edition with huge following. Last I checked, probably more than 100,000 views on that video. So yeah, they published it. At least it was a photo maybe from 2013 or 2014 when the daughter of Richard Allen may have been only 20. So she looks different now. So hopefully people can't conflate that. But you know, I was able to pull down all of Richard Allen's wife's Facebook videos. I got a ton of screenshots, but I've been going through and kind of organizing them. But I do block the daughter's face, the son-in-law's face, the daughter's name, I blocked it. I blocked his wife's face, because I know we have to leave room for them actually not having a clue. Some people think, how could his wife not have a clue? I'd be able to tell, they say, if it were my husband, I could tell his gait, his walk, that blue jacket or whatever, but we just don't know. And I keep thinking of the BTK, that horrible man, and how he fooled his whole church community. His family didn't know and his daughter has written a book and the things she has experienced, so many killers, their families had no clue. And imagine if it were you. One day you wake up, heaven forbid, and your spouse or your family member is all of a sudden arrested for a major killing, draws international attention, and people flock to your home and they start blaming you, pitchforks and torches and like, you must have known. So that's why I've been blocking her photos. And anyway, the judge is going off about, it is known that YouTube already hosts content regarding family members of this judicial officer, including photos. He wrote, the public's blood lust for information before it exists is extremely dangerous. All public servants administering this action do not feel safe and are not protected. The Carroll County Sheriff has limited resources to conduct its base operations, let alone any duties mandated by our Supreme Court. All defendants in all actions are presumed innocent. All public information will be available the second it exists. Well, I don't know about that because they were holding back. I understand when they have to hold back on like a murder weapon. If it's something only the killer would know, if it's some type of too upsetting, too graphic, something that will throw the case off. I never buy the excuse that, oh, it'll taint a jury pool if we put out too much info. You can always change venues, which I hope this case does. I hope it comes closer this way. And I know for sure you will always be able to find a jury member who has no idea what Delphi is. I guarantee you, there's millions of people out there right now. If you were to ask them, have you heard of Abby and Libby in the Delphi, Indiana case? Do you know who Richard Allen is? They would wholeheartedly say no. They wouldn't even know who Chris Watts is. Some people don't even know who Ted Bundy was, or there are people who don't follow true crime. So I don't necessarily agree with the public's bloodlust for info before it exists. 
is extremely dangerous. I'm patient enough to let them, yes, build your case. I mean, they had nearly six years and that's another thing where people are like, what? It took that long? But thank God they got them. But still, if that 43 second video contains any more of the bridge guy walking, any more of his voice than has already been released, I mean, it should have been released the second they got it. Mm -hmm. the cable snap. Guys. There's the wheelchair coming up. Guys. Because it could have helped capture Richard Allen sooner. All defendants in all actions are presumed innocent. All public information will be available the second it exists. None of the family members of public servants are part of this action. I agree, all of the public servants are simply people doing their jobs. Most of the public servants are woefully underpaid. Most of the public interests consists of people attempting to raise their status or profit financially. And this guy goes in. The public interests consist of people who want to know if they have more than one killer walking around their town, Judge. Your Honor, the public interests consist of people who are journalists, YouTube creators, media members who are only simply trying to get the facts and doing our job too. Sometimes woefully underpaid too. So don't just lump everyone into the same category. Although I do understand that there are some crazies out there. I don't need to publish this judge's photo. I don't need to publish his wife's photo or name. It's not relevant to the case. I don't need to publish all of his family members' names and photos and create some big conspiracy theory about White County or Carroll County. And I told you I'm not a conspiracy person, but wherever we can find facts, that's what I want. I'm not out to, you know, give someone a roadmap to his house or something. When the public peddles misinformation with reckless abandon, we all are not safe. And, you know, I get, this is why I can see both sides because, because I understand that there are some unhinged people out there who will watch folks like Alex Jones or whomever and they'll start twirling and they'll, you know, start thinking there's a pizza place with people in the basement and they'll have to drive out there and avenge those kids and yeah. Some people push those theories. Some people don't even believe them. They just think there's money in it or whatever. So I get what this judge is saying. He wants to be safe, of course. As far as the public's desire to learn about access to court records, that educational effort cannot be by this officer educating each individual ad hoc whenever they choose to seek public info. Okay, I get it. He doesn't need to respond to, he doesn't have the time or the bandwidth to respond to every Tom, Dick, and Harry who's trying to get info. Why are people emailing the judge anyway? Okay, if the public information officer, and I believe there is one, would just put out in whatever format what information can be released at this time, what can't be released and denied, then that would help the judge out. These inquiries are inherently disruptive to the operations of the court as they are wholly outside the operations of the court. As a branch of the Supreme Court, any requests for public info about this action should be directed to whomever is the public information coordinator for the courts in general. If there is not such a position, our state may need one. I thought they had one. I don't know. I feel like I've emailed them. Have I emailed that person? I think I have. Defendant indicated at initial hearing an intention to hire private counsel. So Richard Allen, he must have a little money left. People were saying maybe he has money in his um, house or something, whatever. Obviously he wants a lawyer. Defendant is reminded that he must retain counsel within 20 days of the initial hearing because there are deadlines for filing motions and raising defenses. If those deadlines are missed, the legal issues and defenses that could have been raised will be waived or given up. So I don't know when Richard Allen's initial hearing was. I think it was that Friday. None of us got to see it. I think Indiana courts are all closed off. I hope we can get some cameras in there. There's some kind of a maybe with that. 
if defendant is unable to retain counsel of his choosing due to financial indigency, defendant is reminded that he is entitled to court-appointed counsel and defendant will be examined upon request. The court notes for the public that when defendant appeared for the initial hearing, he was clad in protective gear. We know what that means. That protection was not to protect defendant from the court. That protection was to protect defendant from the public. So he's saying, oh, we didn't need to be protected from crazy Richard Allen hiding in plain sight, alleged psycho double murder suspect. No, that protection was to protect Richard Allen from the crazy public. Until a finding of guilt or a judgment of conviction occurs in any case, judgment must be reserved and the presumption of innocence must be respected and preserved. That is true. Accordingly, pursuant to Indiana Code 3533111, the court orders the Sheriff of Carroll County to transfer Richard Allen, basically, to a facility of the DOC designated by the Commissioner of the Department as suitable for the confinement of defendant and provided that space is available, so ordered on this third day of November. Judge Benjamin A. Diener, I think it is. Yeah, so we'll see what he does with that probable cause affidavit. We might not see it for a while. In the meantime, I'm grateful that media stations are filing the correct paperwork to try and get that probable cause affidavit released. One journalist wrote, from a PR standpoint, I'm concerned that there is a sealed case with no case number available or known publicly, no probable cause affidavit, and no public hearing date to determine if the record should be sealed. So that was at that point, you know, which it was too much secrecy. Maybe in Indiana, they're used to doing things a little bit differently and way secretly. I do suggest the court be clear with the procedural info on what is public and when or why, according to the rule, it is not public. True, so now we have a case number 08CO2210 MR1, the state of Indiana versus Richard M. Allen. So I'm glad we have that case number. You can finally see it in the My Case Indiana records. The order acknowledging a public hearing for November 22nd, 2022 at 9 a.m. in the Carroll Circuit Court, we will figure out if we have that probable cause affidavit coming to us. And there was an email sent to the media. Thank you for your eloquent requests. First off, as a judicial officer, I'm not able to discuss any pending or impending cases. And it goes through request the court record the judge is basically saying, protect me from this coming storm. The request shall demonstrate Indiana ruse. So he goes through a lot of the rules and such, but at least they did grant the case and the media did this to request it. And the judge said, okay, I relent. He grants the request at least for the case number and the public hearing on the PC to come out on the my case dot indiana dot gov because when we first went in there you know we couldn't see anything we couldn't see any murder charges we didn't see the case number all we saw was richard allen's old driving infractions and that's about it in fact there was some kind of domestic charge and it's hard to distinguish because richard m allen is a common name it's hard to distinguish what is his and what isn't that's it we have at least that much thank god but yeah i mean i would caution people to i guess not go too far it's good to sleuth but there is a line to me with sleuthing some things are legal but i ask myself is it morally okay you know is it like it's legal yeah if i were to publish his wife's public photos and everything, but you know, morally, do I want some sickos trying to track down Richard Allen's wife and his daughter and such? Let's just close with 1 John 2, 28 through 29. Now, little children, believers, dear ones, remain in him with unwavering faith so that when he appears at his return, we may have perfect confidence and not be ashamed and shrink away from him at his coming. If you know that he is absolutely righteous, you know for certain that everyone who practices righteousness, doing what is right and conforming to God's will has been born of him. Thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned. I still have a lot more about Delphi I want to cover.